I need healing. I require healing. That's, that's an intro. That's my intro. That's what I'm doing. That's where I'm... I need healing. On it. You approach the wildcat leaning over a thick tree. Where is it? Here. He lifts the left arm to you, showing you matted fur and a few perforations on the skin, a bite wound on his forearm. When was it? Just now. I thought we were done. Bastard got the jump on me. You pull your bag to your side and start looking inside for one particular container. I've still got some antidote here. Somewhere. Can't you just, you know, pee on it? He nudges his head, trying to hint at something. Before you're able to reply, a tall, bulking lion in heavy armor approaches, his footsteps announcing his arrival. Let him do his work. You raise your head to look at the lion, who nods to you in approval. You smile back and then resume searching your bag. Well, I could... I could, but then I, st I still have antidote left, and... You find an opaque vial with translucent green liquid swirling inside. Here, uh, you can drink it all. You hand the small vial to Firin, who unceremoniously chugs the entire thing in one go. Was that your last? I still have one here. Yep, one left. Firin hands you back the vial and then contorts his face, letting out a disgusted grunt. Bitterweed. Nasty. Oop. That was a noise. You put the empty vial back in your bag and take out a water skin container. Use it to wash the bite wound on the cat's arm. I haven't seen you cast a sparkle yet. You avoid his gaze, focusing now on, a, on wrapping a bandage around his arm. Well, I didn't think this would take this long. I didn't eat a lot before coming. An unquieted silence lingers. You can sense the disapproval coming from the cat, even without looking at his expression. Sorry. Don't apologize. You're being smart by saving your strength. Longmane shoots Fury in a condescending look. Next time, just don't get hit. The cat put his tongue out, making a face towards the lion. Next time, kill him dead. You finish bandaging the cat and step away, taking a better look at his entire figure, trying to see if there's anything else wrong with him. Physically speaking, at least. You're all good. Yeah, thanks. He takes his arm closer to his face and casually sniffs his bandages. I washed it with BP. Just give it some time and it'll be fully healed. See, he knows what he's doing. Longman pats you on the shoulder and gives you a reassuring smile. Great job, kid. You give him a smile back, but then look behind him and spot the slim fox watching over the bushes. Before you have time to ask, his voice is heard. Uh, guys? Ryu now looked, uh, turned to look at his direction. Uh, more coming? For fuck's sake. Jim starts falling back to where the rest of the group is. At the same time, Longmane and Furion unsheath their weapons and prepare for combat. <laughs> From the shadows, you start seeing the faint glow of red, beady eyes nearing the small clearing in the woods your group stands. The shapes start becoming... Knitted? Knighted? Is it the name of the creature, maybe? And you see several monstrous-looking spiders crawling from under the vegetation. The sight creeping you out as much as it did the rest of the, light of the night so far. Main. The commanding voice has its effect and the lion rushes forward, delivering a heavy blow to the nearest spider. I got these. Longmane does a long, wide swing with his axe, hitting several spiders at once and knocking them away. Ah! Look out! You look up to see bigger insects crawling down from the trees, approaching a group from every direction now. Stay alert! Fearing is quick to react to a large insect moving on his, on his direction. 
With a fast swipe of his blade, he kills the creature with ease. Kill every single one. Uh, okay. Yeah. Jim lowers his stance in preparation before dashing forward, swiftly cutting through one of the monsters. Yuck. He then shakes his blade, trying to get the thick blood out. I hate bugs. I hate bugs. Tyrion dashes through the clearing, man uh, mangling the bodies of other insects with dexterity. Jim, pay attention. Ah. Both Fyrian and Jim immediately go quiet and lock sights on the monster approaching her position. In one moment, both dash in, performing a joint attack that obliterates the thing. Ah. Not done yet. Oh no. Where's Mane? With a jumping attack, Longmane strikes down on, on what appears to be the last of the spiders. Be gone. To his surprise, a few cr crawlers have sh surrounded him. They raise the bodies off the, the floor and begin to lunge the lion's unguarded flanks. Ah! Three manage to latch onto the lion's body, making him flail around, trying to get, him get them off himself. Main! Jim spots the lion struggling and, pre and, pre and prepares his blades. I got it. The fox runs up to the large man and does precise cuts from right to left to right, splitting in half two of the bugs. Meanwhile, Longmane manages to snatch the last one in his bare hands, throwing it to the floor before stomping it with incredible strength. To hell with these creepers. You step closer to the two, feeling your safety increasing by standing in the lion's proximity. Jim looks towards Furion, who's fending off several small insects and showering, showing clear signs of fatigue. Just die already. He shouts as he jumps forward and stabs a crawler on the floor. I don't see any more nearby. Where do they keep coming from? There. The cat points to a specific direction, towards something that you cannot see yet. The spring! Ah! Jim lets out a, a tired yet contented sigh. Virion, watch out. Just as Virion turns around, he gets jumped by a big carapace creature with eight spik uh, spiky legs. You gasp as you watch the cat fall to the floor under the thing. Ah! Get... Off me! Virion! The fox runs to, to the cat holding his dagger tight. The next moment he's stabbing the creature back time and time again. Uh, the creature's back time and time again, letting out distressed grunts in the process. Jim! Your attention from the scene is taken aback as you feel Longmane grab your arm and pull you back. Before you can understand what's happening, his, he steps in front of you and attacks a similar looking creature in midair. If it wasn't for the lion's watch, you'd be mimicking Furion's struggle at this very moment. And speaking of... Ugh! You can hear the cat crying out in pain. It has a clear effect on Jim as he responds with his own screams, holding both daggers over his head before striking down on the thing. Furion! He manages to catch the... He managed to cast the creature as aside, the thing still shaking and convulsing as it bleeds to death. You run and get on your knees by his, by his side. Are you okay? The moment you get there, you notice that he was pointing... Uh, what he was pointing at before, the distinct shimmer of the abyss mana escaping from a spring not too far away. I'm... Ugh. Your attention is drawn back to the cat in front of you. He motions to get back up, but then cringes in pain and falls back to the floor, grabbing at his left shoulder. Did it... bit... it bit you? What's wrong? You look around and examine him, spotting few cuts and openings on his garments, but nothing looking so dire yet. I think... He moves his hand from the shoulder and you can see him pulling out what seems to be a talon from the creature, one that it used to stab him near the arm. Fucking... ah, um... You look around you. Jim is in a shocked state, 
looking at the cat lying on the floor while Longman, Longman is a few steps away, still fending off bugs as they appear. What are you doing? Heal me! Okay, okay, I'm just... Okay, stand still. You take a closer look at his wound. It's a clear perforation, and it's bleeding slowly. And it bleeds slowly. You could wash it and seal the wound with medicine from your bag. It'll only take a minute or so, but Firion seems to be in high distress. On the other hand, you can feel the exhaustion nearing. Your group has been in the forest for a few hours now, looking for the Abyss Spring. At least the past half in combat. Using healing magic to seal a wound like this wouldn't take much from you, but it still makes you uneasy. Well, be careful. You pull your bag to your side once again, this time quickly finding the water skin container with Broppy solution, the mixture used to clean and disinfect wounds as well as help with natural healing process. I'm going to seal it with, the, with Snowdrop and BP. You half expect him to scrutinize you from deciding against using magic again, but this time he only lets out a low grunt and lays his head on the ground. Do what you gotta do, healer. You rip the cloth around the wound a bit more to have better access to it, and then start pouring some of the solution with your water skin into the wound. The cat barely flinches in reaction. You proceed to take a small package from your bag with leaves inside, although there's a name written on it. You can recognize the snowdrop tulip leaves with no issues by now. These are usually put under the bandages for burns and such, and such wounds, and help speed up the, with skin regeneration, but when, met, when wet they become sticky, which makes it work as a perfect patch for wounds hard to bandage around, such as this one. Okay. You press on it slightly, with a couple, and after a couple of moments it seems like the wound no longer bleeds. The leaf dissolved itself into the fur and sealed the wound. It can safely heal by itself. Am I gonna live? Well, yeah. You take a step back and watch as he, man and he, make as he makes an effort to stand back up without putting much strain on his left arm. Are you... okay? Yeah, yeah. Hurts like a bitch, but... He moves his arm around and does a few slow moves with his sword in hand. I can fight. He looks over to you and gives you a simple nod. Thanks. Not a problem. He looks over behind you, which prompts you to turn around, and now you both watch the lion arched forward, heavy breathing. Maine? I'm fine. I can go all night. Sure, buddy. Was that all of them? The spring. You and the cat look over in the same direction, spotting the subtle lights coming from only a few trees away. We need to... The entire group goes silent for a second as he, all you hear... As you all hear a disturbing noise coming from the same direction. The now familiar noise of several insects crawling towards your position, but this time mixed with a loud screech. What was that? Give me a break! You spot the shadows lurking around the spring, something moving in your direction, fast approaching. Behind me. Now. The lion picks up his weight and runs in front of you all, putting himself between your group and whatever it is coming from the woods. That looks... too big! Calm down, Jim. Do we... are we fighting it? the last thing standing between us and the Abyss Spring. But... Jim, just keep the healers safe. And then the screech comes again, this time much closer. Leaves start moving. And then suddenly, a two meter tall centipede monster rises from the ground with a horrible mouth and a razor sharp, articulated blade attached to its tail. I think there shouldn't be a comma there. Just razor-sharp articulated blade, yeah. Truly a creature that should never exist, but is made alive by the mysterious powers of the Abyss Mana Spring. Now. The lion jumps forward, swinging his axe at the monstrosity, but missing. The thing can move around and dance in the air with incredible speed. It dodges attack after attack that the lion keeps throwing at it. 
Then it goes on the offensive, swinging its tail blade horizontally at the lion who's barely able to parry the strike with his axe. Main! Firion runs up the enemy the enemy's flank and pushes forward with the thrusting motion of his blade. Ha! Huh. Then the creature is fast in its retribution, using its entire body to tackle the cat away. The main draws attention to himself, again by jumping in, trying to hit it again and again. Main isn't fast enough. Jim, you've got to help them. I can't. The thing is, it's too scary. Jim, they're gonna... As you, as you turn to face him, you notice shadows creeping up behind you two. Ah, there's more. More? More centipedes crawl out from under the bushes. There's... Too many. Jim, you can do this. I... I don't know. Trust in yourself, you've got this. You're... Besides... I really need you to deal with those things right now, please. Uh, Alright. I, I I can do this. Main asked to keep you safe. The fox psychs himself up before diving to the small pack of insects, jumping in the air before crashing down with his edge. I'll keep you safe. The other crawlers around the fox turn to face him, but he's got a firm grip on his daggers, ready to fight. Jim has done so much tonight. The others have had their fair share of fighting as well, and I... I need to start helping more, however I can. The spring isn't far. We just need to be defeat that big one. This is the finish line. This quest can finally be over. No. Ugh! You turn around to see the big lion get pushed around and land on his hands and knees. You can't see from where, but blood spills from his form into the ground. The giant creature skitters around him and prepares for a follow-up but the lion is relentless. He powers through, picks up his axe from the floor and delivers a blow to the monster, shaving off a few of its terrible legs. You... Hellspawn! The lion tries to back away but falters for a split second, the noticeable exhaustion now mixed with sustained damage. You know that if left alone, he won't last long. Die! Virian comes rushing, and delivers a series of cuts to the thing, making it slide away with another loud screech. I got it. Help Main. You run behind the tired line and help move him further from the action while Firion deals with an onslaught of blows from the monster. The cat has to skip around and block several attacks in succession, barely managing not to get hit by the monster's fangs. Uh, ah! Turn back to see Jim crouched, a centipede stuck to his leg. It's quick enough to stab the thing twice, making it let go. For a moment you think his problems are at least dealt with, but the fox stumbles to the ground. Jim? Go help him. Uh, are you sure? You need help too. You can't help but notice how bloody the lion's armor is at the moment. He certainly notices it too. I'll be fine. Go. It gives you a reassuring look, one that almost fools you into thinking he's actually fine. You hesitate, but not in response. Okay? He perks up his form, stretches his shoulders and neck, and prepares to make his way back to where Fearing is fighting that thing. Oh, I thought it was going to be a, ch a, pr a choice there. You approach the fox, seeing no other live monster around. What is... My leg, it... It hurts! It stings! Stings? Oh, oh no. You take a closer look at the several protrusions made by sharp teeth from the monster. From all its menacing, scary fe uh, features, the fact that it could be poisonous as well sounds sounded like exaggeration to you. Maybe... We shouldn't be here. Can you help me? Please? Yeah, I'm... Take a, a quick look back to spot Long Mane hunched over, one knee to the floor, catching his breath. His blood is pulling at his feet. He is in dire need of help. Firion holds the monstrosity's attention, but he can only keep fighting he alone for so long. You need to act fast. Using magic to heal Jim's leg would be most effective, but that would mean leaving Mane to defend himself in his poor state. Can he hold on until he you're at least done healing Jim? 
Alternatively, you'd give Jim that one antidote you still have, and that would take care of the immediate danger of the poison and give you time to go give Longmane some much-needed healing. I mean, yes, that. That's literally the solution I was already thinking. I'm like, you got you set up the fact that there's already an antidote on hand, so you can deal with the guy that's literally bleeding out while giving the other person a spot check solution and get to them later if need be. That's a doable thing. It was I was gonna I was gonna be frustrated if that wasn't an option because I was like, that's literally definitely what you do, right? We we set up the antidote. You reach into your bag and take the last vial of antidote. The mixture made of bittersweet leaves has strong properties of cleansing the bloodstream and can act as an antidote for several poisons and illnesses. You take the fox's hand and put the vial in it, which it promptly takes. Drink it all. Don't worry about the bite. Arr, are you sure? You'll be fine. I've got to help Maine. You stand back and up and prepare to leave, turning back for a second. I'll come back for you in a second. Just hang in there. You give him a nod. The worry on his face is extremely concerning. You try not to show your own worries, but the lion up ahead is on a much worse state, and you had to make the call. Maine, are you okay? You arrive at his side and try to help him stand back straight. The lion is exhausted, and his breathing is quite erratic. You see that blood is seeping from under his chest plate. Wounds? I'm... Ugh. A closer inspection, you see blood over the back of his hand and over his legs as well. His situation might be worse than you expected. Hold on, I'll help you. He gives you a tired look. You can decipher it as being worried about you casting healing magic, but given his current state, that would be absolutely necessary. You shut your eyes and focus for one second. This is going to be a big one. You open your palm towards the ground and the glove's arcane circle starts acting up. Slowly a circular drawing on the earth starts forming and once it is closed it begins emanating a glowing aura. You let out a grunt as you feel the, the mana leaving your body for a circle as big as this one, but this may be the most effective way to heal him right now. Ah. You can hear his relieved, relieved sigh as the damage from all over his body begin to ache less and less. A minute or so later, you awake from your trance by hearing Furion's cries of pain. You look to the side to see him being flung onto a tree before sliding him down to a sitting position. That'll do. The lion grabs your arm, signaling for you to stop the spell, which you do so without fussing. The circle under him stops glowing within a second. He takes a big breath and prepares to go back into the fight, rushing forward to cast defense. You watch as the large lion runs ahead and drives the creature away with a swing of his axe. Virion, get up! Their struggle continue. Their struggles continue. Or their struggle continues? Honestly, both could be right, but, but this isn't. <laughs> Uh, but you turn your head back to check on the fox. Your stomach sinks as you find nothing. Jim? You rush to the place where you could swear it, it was he had been sitting. Uh-oh. That's alarming. Was he nabbed or did he run for it because of because of, he's just afraid? You do a quick look around, searching for any signs of the fox. The antidote has a slow effect. He probably wouldn't be able to get up and walk away so easily. Jim, where did you go? You spunt the glint from the vial on the floor amidst the grass. It's empty. You can assume he at least drank the antidote. As you wonder what could have happened, you spot the blood stains on the floor, likely coming from his leg. The stains are smudged across the terrain. Your eyes follow the direction leading to a, a bush nearby. Jit. Oh no. Oh no. <laughs> and then you see it, his leg sticking out from under the bush. They're completely limp, is being dragged away. Now that you're quiet, you can hear the skitters of insects moving and terrible nausea comes upon you. No. You stay frozen in place for what feels like an hour, watching the fox's body get dragged away by those things. You're completely unable to move or act. You can't even tell if the fox is able to be saved or if it's already too late. What is the trick 
What does the trick to snap you back to reality is the sounds of the giant centipede fighting against Longmane and Furion. You turn back to find the cat on his knees while the lion stands in, fr stands in front of him. It's like the failed party prologue at the beginning of, uh, of uh, Delicious in Dungeon, which I just watched like last week. Both are hurt and exhausted beyond what they can take, but the creature shows no signs of stopping its onslaught. This is stressful. Time seems to freeze then and there, painting a picture of what's to come. The two will die fighting. They will not leave this forest alive. And neither will Jim. All for one abyss spring. All because of a weak and unprepared healer. You shouldn't be so familiar with this feeling, yet here you are. <laughs> so if we keep helping, we might we also might die. I don't know if it's I don't know if I can say it's all because of an unprepared healer. We've been actively helping. They just keep almost dying simultaneously. They need this isn't uh you can't blame the healer on this one. You need they need like two more people. Like they they didn't bring enough people for this and they can't cover each other at all. So that at the moment the healer deals with anybody, it's somebody's left alone. Well, let's die. You shut your eyes and try to concentrate. You can feel your body giving, but you can't take you can't turn back now. They still need you. This time you will use however little strength you still have, but you will stay by them. And you will fight until this is over. You drop down to your knees and plant your palms in the ground. Your glove starts to glow once more, stronger than it has before. You will cast a circle big enough to wrap both of them and keep them up until they can finish the fight. You look up to where your companions are. Longmane takes a few steps back, trying to impose himself between the monster and the injured swordsman, but aware that he himself can't put up much more of a fight. Your circle starts drawing around the two, the line taking notice of the faint glow. Wrong faint. Realizing what's happening, he quickly takes a step forward, waving his axe to stop the monster's advance. He is aware he just needs to hold position, and that he will and that and that this is what he will do. The monster contorts and spins its body, the tail moving forth and swinging at the lion, who focuses on just parrying the attack. Meanwhile, you focus on finding and healing any wounds you could get their spell on. All the many cuts and bruises scattered across both their bodies. Your tired body starts to give. Your mind becomes hazed. You feel yourself almost falling forward. But you hold on to it first. You must keep the healing spell going. But the second time the haze hits you. It gets you down for good. You can barely keep your eyes open. You can't hear any fighting going on anymore. You can't see a thing in front of you, but you manage to discern a sparkle of blue lights flying by. Then another one. It feels like a dream. You can't tell if you're even awake anymore. Rest easy now. You hear an unfamiliar voice saying something close by, but you're unable to decipher what it says. Before long, you have no more strength to stay conscious. Whoops! But also, I guess we get saved? I don't know if he got saved, though. He sounded, uh, devoured. You reach for the tavern door and push it open. You make your way in and... Apollo, my guy! It's a hyena! I think. As soon as you enter the tavern, the loud voice comes from behind the bar. Caden, the barkeep, can, see, uh, can be seen waving her hands high in the air pulling yours and most other people's attention. Hey, I'm back. 
You walk through the room and reach the counter. The large dough, whoops, <laughs> awaits you for, uh, awaits you with arms on her waist. Arms? Hands? Yeah. But then everyone else has returned to their business. Always glad to see you in one piece. <laughs> Thanks. You take out your bag from your shoulder and rest it on the counter and then take a heavy pouch tied to your waist and put it in your in, uh, by the bag. Caden is quick to notice the pouch. Big payout, eh? You could say something like that. Good for you, my man. She proceeds to turn away for a moment, taking a mug from, uh, from a shelf and a bottle from under the counter. In a few seconds, she's pouring you a drink. It was actually pretty easy this time. She pushes the mug, and it goes sliding over the counter, stopping precisely at your hand. We thought we were we thought there was gonna be a dragon, but a dragon? A father flipping dragon? In the end it was just a big lizard. Poor thing went down so fast. Still. Hot damn, dude. You pick up the mug and take a, f a small sip. The sweet taste of the amanium beverage is always a nice treat. And speaking of hot dudes. You almost choke on the drink. Caden is wiggling her eyebrows. Got you a gig if you wanna. Fellow's looking for a healer. A good one. In bed. You put the mug down and wipe your muzzle with your arm. Well, I... I gotta sell these clusters first. You poke the pouch on the counter. Just meet the guy, will ya? He's a fun lad. Hmm. Okay, fine. She raises her posture and shouts. Mundo, come get your healer. This one's a hyena. <laughs> First one is a false alarm. This time I'm more sure. <laughs> the fact that that's how that played out is very funny. You turn your head to look where she's shouting at. You spot a well-built well shepherd? It's a German shepherd. God damn it. <laughs> what? <laughs> Me being wrong while the right answer is on the an on the screen already. You spot a well a well built shepherd breed getting up from a chair and walking your direction. He's sporting a messy yet char a messy yet charming hair, and his fur is looks poorly kept. Nevertheless, you can immediately relate to Caden's thoughts. He walks with confidence. And as soon as he notices you, a sly smile forms in his face. Hey there. He stops by your side on the bar, eyeing you up and down discreetly. You notice the hint of alcohol coming from his breath, from just one sentence. The name's Sigmund, but you can call me... Danny. No. <laughs> Mundo! The, jo <laughs> the doe grabs the dog from the shoulder and shakes him playfully. Only you can call me that. Mundo? Mund? Sigmund? Ah, okay. He lets his neck go limp and his head shakes around comically, his smile never fading away. Caden finally releases him, letting Sigmund regain his form and clear his throat, trying to salvage his first impression. Sig. You can call me Sig. He shows you his sly smile once again and offers you a hand. You must be Apollo, right? You frown while reaching for his hand, his handshake quite firm. You know me? I've seen you around. It's pretty hard to miss. That beautiful fur of yours is qu such an exquisite sight. He keeps a gentle hold of your hand. Ah, uh, um, he chuckles. And she did scream your name when you got in. Oh, yeah, true. You're the best healer I know, man. Mundo, you're not gonna find a better pick. Well, ain't that a treat. You feel your cheeks warm up. You reach for the mug for another sip. How about I pay for your drink? He puts his most charming smile so... He puts on his most charming smile so far and reaches his hand into his trouser pockets. You quickly realize that his gesture of putting 
the hand on his pocket made it seem like you were staring at his junk. You gag and choke on the liquid. You put the mug on the counter, coughing and wiping your face with the hand. Sivgan seems delighted by your reaction. You aren't sure if he noticed you staring. I'm... Uh, I'm sorry? He chuckles and takes a silver coin from the pocket before flipping it in the air. It lands on the counter. Blustered so easily. I might be paying for all your drinks then. You finish wiping your muzzle with an arm, but before you can say anything, Caden slaps the coin and takes it. She gives you a smirk and a wink. You're such a gentleman, Mundo. <laughs> I try my best. The two exchange a smile. Do we have any follow-up on what happened with the other party? Th then the dog is back to eyeing you. <laughs> I'll let you two gents talk business. She has a very exaggerated wink at him and then slowly walks away, giggling. Sigmund seems amused by her theatrics. When she's gone, he crosses his arms over the counter and focuses attention back on you. So you're an experienced healer, yeah? You shrug. Uh, I can heal, yeah. There's a dungeon that's been growing for a few weeks and a few weeks now, off the mountains on the south road. Not terribly big, but no cakewalk either. A dungeon? In all your time adventuring, you only set foot in a dungeon maybe a handful of times. Those usually, th those are usually much more dangerous than the monster camps that commonly appear with abyss springs. It'll take a few days until the Arbiters swoop in. I'm thinking. He, lo he looks around for a second. We could clear it before that. We got the muscles. He lifts an arm and flexes for you. You can't tell if he was expecting a reaction, as it just lasts a moment before it continues on. But it would be a lot safer with a healer on board, you know? Yeah, I get that. Arborea has become somewhat of a pillar for adventures, looking to group up and take on quests to clear out and seal the Abyss Mana Springs. Healers and magic caster in general are very rare compared to the loads of skilled fighters that follow this path. This benefits you, making you a popular option for a lot of groups. So, what do you say? He leans in closer to you now. Would you like to join me? Little tiny... Game Boy Color blush on his face. Something about his demeanor gives you a sense that he does indeed look capable of dealing with a dungeon. Or at least, he has much trust in himself that he can do it. Sounds like a great offer. Can I think about it? Of course. Come nighttime, meet me back here, yeah? I'll show you the rest of the raiding party. Uh, okay then. <laughs> nice. Enjoy your drink. And he winks at you. He turns to walk away. You can't help but notice how his tail swings casually from side to side. You catch yourself staring, and then turn to your drink, taking a big swig at it. Damn you, Caden. <laughs> this is a fun little intro. Alright, so I think that's the uh, that's going to be where we go for today, but if you want to check this game out in its entirety, uh, you can check out I Need Healing on itch.io, there's a link in the description. Uh, I think we just did the prologue a minute ago, and then this is chapter one, which is the update that just came out. So let's not spoil all of it right away, but uh, yeah, the, the art's off to a good start. It's just, it's pretty neat there. It's, I like seeing that something just has its own style, that sets it apart from everything else. Uh, definitely could use a, a, a revision and a proofreader for the text because it's just some strange uh, typos throughout. But it's it's off to a good start. You can also check out a bunch of other uh, furry visual novels that I've done Let's Tries of via the link to the playlist in the description. There are dozens. There are so many, and I'm going to keep going. See you guys next time. Mm -hmm.